Well, hey everyone, uh, welcome to another video. Today I wanted to show you my Emerson uh, radio that I picked up at Savers for uh, three bucks today. Um, there isn't a lot of information online on this radio, but as far as I can tell, and the consensus is that it was built in 1966. By then, Emerson had moved a lot of their manufacturing uh, over to Japan. Their headquarters were still in the U.S. Um, I had to do a lot of cleaning on this vid on this radio, and I wish I had done a before and after because this thing was a mess. Uh, I'll show you. There was rust all over the uh, speaker grill cover, uh, caked in dirt around the volume and power control and the tone control. Uh, the leatherette was a mess. Uh, I renewed that with some uh, simple armor all. Um, I'm guessing this is le leatherette and not genuine leather. Uh, the antenna was in great shape. Uh, it's quite long. That's our FM antenna right there. And I'm going to flip it around to the back. See if I can open this up for us. Let me fold this down. I want to show you what it looks like on the inside because it's it's pretty cool. Here we go, there's the inside of it. It is model P, I'm sorry, 31P63, 12 transistor. And I believe this has eight FM tune circuits and five AM tune circuits. Uh, it runs off of one, two, three, four C batteries. Our battery holding tube is still in usable shape. We had no corrosion on the battery terminals. We even have our uh, AM power adapter. Um, there's a switch on the side and you switch it from AC to DC. When I ran it in the store off of AC, I noticed that there was a little bit of hum. All you capacitor fans and uh, doomsayers uh, who I'm sure the first comment I'm going to get is change all the capacitors. Well, the only ones I think I'm going to change are these two, which I'm guessing are filter caps, and that should take care of the hum. On DC, we have no hum at all, so I may keep it a DC set. But look at this ferrite loop. Isn't that cool? Nice long. You can see the, the coil there. Uh, you can see the speaker. Guessing that's the tuning cap. Transformer for the AC power supply. But that's how they made stuff in the 1960s. My dad had a beautiful uh, Vanguard 888 uh, Emerson radio, which I believe is still in the house. Uh, my sister still lives in uh, the pa parents' uh, home. And it's either in my dad's closet or my brother has it, but... That was made in the late 1950s. Uh, my dad was an engineer, and I'm sure wanted to get his hands on to uh, some early solid state. Uh, obviously, this, this guy is uh, a little bit later, but it has that vintage transistor sound, which it, it, I'll, I'll play the audio on this thing. It's just beautiful. We've got a Tuning meter for AM and FM uh, also doubles as a battery check. AM, FM, and automatic 
frequency control. Uh, on the side, we've got that AC battery switch and an earphone jack. Nothing on this side except for uh, leatherette. Uh, we've got a tone control, volume control, tuning. Interesting, when you power this thing up on AC, the uh, light comes on on the uh, tuning dial. You've got a logging scale in the middle, and you've got tuning that goes well beyond 1600 on, on AC. You can see uh, identified in kilocycles and megacycles. So I'm going to play this thing for you, and uh, you'll be able to listen. I, I think it sounds fantastic. It's swinging better of late, but still hitting only 225 with 15 homers. I've got insurance, the proper setting sponsor, the WEINS and Jimmy Fund Radio Telephone, dedicated to striking out cancer. For every strikeout from a Red Sox pitcher, our Bell Insurance Foundation donates $50 to the Jimmy Fund. I'm probably here for the Jimmy Fund here for good. Would you like to see a ground ball to the shortstop or second baseman? The pitch is a fastball in there for a strike at the knees. The judge will walk to third. Rizzo hit by a pitch at first with one out. Walker pitched seven scoreless innings in a 3 nothing win over the Yankees. The only time they faced him this year, August 14th. That one's outside. Missed with a slider there at 88. right-hander out of Texas A&M, Michael Walker, pitched in the city for the Mets. And of course, mostly a St. Louis Cardinal in his career, the pitch. And that dips a little low and away with his changeup. Two balls and a strike. Yankees are 90 and 58. So they've got a shot at 100 wins. setting for the 2-1 and low and away well, this is unusual because Walker has such great command I mean not only does he walk people but he hits his spot so consistently three balls and a strike to Donaldson and Carlos Stanton who had a walk off grand slam night before last on deck the three one ground ball hits a short bogarts to second out chang the first easy double play i mean donaldson was doubled he was 45 feet from first base when the double play was completed so the yankees do not score after one zero zero in the shaws and star market wei red sox network all right so we've got some red sox yankees on the radio i love listening to baseball on the radio, uh, season's coming to an end, and, well, we'll have to find some alternative programming. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to be doing some DXing on this set. What I like about it is it's very sensitive, but it's also a pleasure to listen to. The tone quality, you saw me go through the... Uh, to the left is low tone, all the way uh, clockwise is higher tone, and it just sounds beautiful. So, and it, on AM, it is sensitive as anything. I, I just can't believe how hot of a tuner it is. Um, seems very nice on FM as well. The AFC locks right on, and it's not too hard to... Uh, tune-in stations, so just a nice $3 radio. Um, you almost expect uh, President Johnson to come on to the radio and give a speech. It's It's got that quintessential mid to late 60s look to it, so hope you enjoyed taking a look at this radio, and take care for now.